it's probably too shallow for a great white to even consider swimming in that direction. <laughs> Why are shark movies so bad? Hi, my name is Amani Weber Schultz. I'm a shark scientist. I study shark morphology. Today, we're gonna to be looking at shark attacks in movies and judging how real they are. <laughs> I don't even know who came up with the idea that you should hit a shark on the nose to get away from them. In general, if you're being attacked by anything, you should probably be hitting them in whatever places you can to get them away from you. However, shark noses aren't as weak as I think we make them out to be. They're overlaid with some skills that are basically meant for abrasion strength. So if they're poking around trying to figure out what something is, their nose is protecting them from getting harmed. <laughs> they don't necessarily have to eat as often as movies portray them to. <laughs> Shark digestion actually takes a really long time, whereas us as people, we have a really fast metabolism, and so we're eating all the time. Sharks have a lot slower versions of that. Once they get enough in a meal, they'll just swim around and let all of that digest. <laughs> so people are not a natural food item for sharks, and so they aren't necessarily swimming around the ocean thinking, oh, where's a person for me to eat? Often they're really just looking for what their favorite meal is, which we do know that sharks have preferences for what food they're consuming. Often when they bite people, it's a curiosity bite, meaning they just want to know what we are. They actually did a pretty decent job of making Bruce the shark look somewhat correct. Sharks have between five and seven gill slits. Great whites have five, and in this movie they did give him five, which admittedly made me happy. <laughs> One of the biggest things that they got wrong is his size, though. In the film, he's around 25 feet, which is far larger than the largest great whites that we know about. In general, females are the bigger of the two of males and females, and they get to be around 16 feet as a total maximum length. So. Bruce is about 10 feet larger than the average great white shark that we know of. This movie was really influential in creating this public perception of sharks that they are man eaters and then the subsequent terror that people felt after watching it. There was a really poor view on what sharks are and how important they are to the ecosystem. Now I think we're kind of bouncing back from this. You see a lot of people realizing how important they are to this planet. I'm gonna give this a five out of 10 purely because they did an okay job with the body of Bruce and because I really appreciate the amount of gill slits they gave him. <laughs> Dory, are you okay? Oh. One of the things that this movie did do well is you can actually see the blood from Dory go into Bruce's nose. We have a common misconception that sharks can just smell a drop of blood from a mile away, when in reality, their noses actually work very similar to ours in that they have to get a particle of that blood actually enter their nose for them to realize that it's there. Smell is not necessarily the thing that sharks are using to move about their environment and observe it, but one of the advantages that they have is their lateral line system, which allows them to sense vibrations in the water. So if they're within a certain amount of feet of say an injured fish, they can actually feel the vibrations from that fish flopping around and turn towards that and think, oh, that might be an injured thing that I can eat. They have sight, they do have ears, they can hear. They're using all of these different senses together. Just a boy. <laughs> So sharks do not go in a frenzy when they smell blood, but they do get curious. So often they will completely turn to where that scent of blood came from and swim towards it. In general, they are opportunistic feeders, so they don't want to expend more energy than they need to for the food that they're going to eat. In this example, a clownfish and dory would not actually be a sufficient meal for a great white shark like Bruce, so he wouldn't even be putting any effort into trying to capture them he would be more interested in, say, something like a seal, which would offer him an easier meal and also give him a lot more in terms of energy. Fish and friends, not food! So there are a couple of different types of omnivorous sharks. My favorite example is the bonnethead, which actually eats seagrass in addition to crabs. You also have the biggest sharks in the ocean, such as whale sharks, basking sharks, and megamouth sharks. These are all filter feeders. So they essentially just swim with their mouth open or suction water in to then filter food out. And usually this food ends up being things like plankton or shrimp. But of the sharks in the scene, which are the great white shark, the shortfin mako, and the hammerhead, none of these sharks are omnivorous or vegetarian. I'm gonna give this a four out of 10. 
I'm not convinced that these sharks aren't real sharks. They are like unreasonably realistic down to like the tag that's on the dorsal fin and also that pre-dorsal ridge that you can see on the top of the head of the tiger shark. One of the dead giveaways for knowing if a shark is in fact a tiger shark is those tiger-like gray stripes that you can see on the side of their body, just like you can see in this scene. The smoke in this scene is extremely unrealistic. They wouldn't be smelling the smoke that's in the air and there wouldn't be smoke under the water. It's not unexpected for an attack to be from a tiger shark. They're probably in the top five sharks to be considered to be more dangerous to humans than others. They eat essentially anything. People have found license plates in their stomach, which I think is crazy. So in this scene, Sean Connery is swimming away. If the tiger shark wanted to eat a prey item, especially someone like a person who is not built to be swimming in a water environment, you wouldn't be able to get away. But in this scene, it's probably slightly more realistic to a shark that was just curious, just following you around, trying to kind of figure out what you are. And so this tiger shark isn't actually exerting that much energy in this, probably because it's not actually that interested. I'm gonna give this a six out of 10 because the sharks are actually real. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is one of the ones where this shark swims by and there's like eight gill slits on this thing and it drives me bonkers. This is supposed to be a megalodon shark. They are a prehistoric shark, so they are in fact extinct despite this movie making you believe that they might maybe somewhere be real. <laughs> this shark is okay in terms of anatomically correct. They make this shark around 75 feet long, although newer research is showing that megalodons were probably closer to around 60 feet. Wow. Yes, this is what real shark cinema is. <laughs> there is actually no way to get out of it, and they're also not normally glass. She's like doing like a photo shoot down there with that amount of light. <laughs> I'm going to try to hit it in the eye. She's aiming for the eye. Probably a good idea to aim for the softest spots on the body of anything that is attacking you. Structurally, the weakest spot on a shark in terms of ability to actually give them injury and be somewhat catastrophic to them is their stomach because their stomach is a lot less protected than the upper part of their body, which has a very big layer of muscle and tissue. Their stomach is somewhat lined, but then right past that wall, you have all of their essential organs. However, Sharks have been shown to sometimes be able to swim around with holes in their body, depending on where it is, assuming they don't lose any of those essential organs, because sharks are crazy. <laughs> sharks are not that crazy about dragging their prey along to eat it. They will typically take a big bite and shake their head to create this like gouging motion to get a chunk off and then swallow it. And they also probably wouldn't be trying this hard to get a small piece of prey like a human. I'm gonna rate this as a one out of 10 top tier movie. <laughs> this is supposed to be a great white shark. And if you look at the depth that Blake Lively is surfing at, it's probably too shallow for a great white to even consider swimming in that direction. Juvenile great whites do go into shallower water because they're smaller. So if you're smaller, you can go into shallower water, but really large great whites have a tendency to hang out offshore or in way deeper waters purely because they're too big to actually swim into shallower waters. In 2021, there were around 73 unprovoked shark attacks worldwide, and roughly 50 to 51% of those were people who were surfing or on boards because you are like a large form that has things that look like flippers or fins hanging off the side of you. I could see that being something that they might confused, but whether or not they actually confuse you for another prey item or they're just curious as to what you are is hard to say. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> First of all, absolutely no one would be surfing near a whale carcass because dead mammals smell terrible. Secondly, a great white would absolutely go after a dead whale carcass as opposed to a person because they don't have to expend any energy for it. It's basically free food. I'm gonna give this scene a one out of 10. <laughs> so the fin out of the water trope is mostly a movie thing. Obviously the dorsal fin is the highest point on their body. So if they're swimming near the surface, then you're gonna see that dorsal fin but it's largely unrealistic that sharks are regularly doing this. 
at least that part of this scene is somewhat correct. <laughs> Great white sharks do breach all the way out of the water for a very short period of time before they re-enter. Sharks that breach in general, it's usually during feeding. However, breaching out of the water to reach a person on a boat is very unrealistic. Great whites, when they're breaching, often they will swim relatively slowly when they're trying to figure out if this is a prey item that they actually want to eat. And then in that last couple of feet, that is when they will swim really fast and that's how they end up breaching the water. This is hugely energetically costly though, so they aren't actually breaching as often as the media portrays them to be. It's probably somewhat unlikely that a shark injured to the extent that this one is would keep coming back for the same prey item. However, there are sharks that will eat prey that may or may not cause them harm. A really good example of this is hammerheads. They have been found to have ray barbs or the stingers lodged into their mouth because they love eating them, and it apparently does not bother them to just be swimming around with a bunch of spikes sticking out of their face. I'm giving this a zero out of 10. <laughs> I think the whole clip is ridiculous. It's called photophores. That means cells that light up. The cookie cutter shark. They do show the cookie cutters bioluminesce. That's a really cool fact about them. And this idea of bioluminescence is through the use of photophores, as said in this scene where they have cells that essentially light up along their body. And cookie cutter sharks will do this on purpose to attract a, maybe even a larger predator or a prey item for them. They actually did a pretty decent job on both describing what a cookie cutter shark is and showing how they feed. They do essentially bite the prey that they want to eat and then rapidly spin off, which is how you get that cookie cutter bite mark. They also did a decent job of showing their body. They do have that really large eye because they generally live in habitats that are a lot deeper in the ocean. And so there's not as much natural light going down there. You know what else is weird about them? They swallow their own teeth. I love this fact. Cookie cutter sharks live in a nutrient poor environment. And so getting all of the nutrients that they want can be a lot harder to come by. And so they will swallow the entire bottom row of their teeth to then recycle that calcium. So this is a shark jaw. Sharks, because they lose their teeth so often, they probably do on accident consume some of their teeth. But in general, the cookie cutter shark is the one that we know of that does this on purpose. Their jaw doesn't look like this. The bottom row of teeth is actually all fused together. So it's just one big tooth with a bunch of spikes at the top. And that whole bar of teeth will then fall and they will eat that and retake the calcium out of that. They show them eating in a pack in this specific scene. We don't generally think of them as being pack animals. We usually think of them as being more solitary. They are also more of a deep sea shark. And so us learning about their social habits is actually a lot harder than if we were doing, say, a shark that's at the surface quite often. Cookie cutter sharks have been known to bite people. As a smaller shark, they're pretty much going to be biting whatever they can find to try to get nutrients from. Generally speaking, these bites are not as fatal as, say, if you got bit by a great white shark. But often these happen. People go out swimming in the ocean at dawn or dusk. That is when cookie cutters come up to feed. I'm going to give this a 5 out of 10 because I'm really happy that they told everybody that they swallow their teeth and that they showed that they bioluminesce. <laughs> Chumming the water is pretty common, which is just putting essentially ground up bait into the water. This is a thing that people do use, especially if you go on a shark tourism boat or go cage diving. In this case, they're putting what looks like a lot of blood into the water. Chumming in general is not great for sharks. There have been studies that have showed that if you are a tourism boat or in a touristy area where shark tourism is a really big part of your economy, then chumming can actually teach the sharks to come near when they hear things like boat motors and then start to associate that boat motor or people with food. <laughs> this one is just funny. In general, if you have to swim in a direction going through the area where food may or may not be for a predator is not good advice. It's quite unrealistic that if someone got bitten in the abdomen that they wouldn't just bleed out and die immediately. There is no such thing as a soft grip if you're in the mouth of a shark. And so they would have probably just been bleeding a lot more and or had full chunks bitten out of them. Oh my gosh, they put the, 
Wow. <laughs> so in this scene, you can see all these little black dots around the underside of its nose. These are called ampullae of Lorenzini, which allow sharks to detect electricity. And they use this to essentially just sense electricity in the ocean. So when we like tense our muscles, that creates little tiny amounts of electricity and they can actually sense that. And I am in shock that they put that on the shark in this movie. <laughs> I'm giving this a four out of 10 because I like that they included the ampullae of Lorenzini. <laughs> the sharks circling this raft. That is pretty common because sharks are curious, just like us. So if they want to know what something is, they will kind of circle around to just keep some eyes on it, maybe try to get some smells and figure out what it is. A really good example of this is people who dive with oceanic white tips. They're quite curious in terms of sharks. And so they will kind of come up to you and swim around and be looking at you and maybe trying to smell what you are. Whether or not you should be splashing to get away from them or not is kind of up in the air, but in general, splashing will draw attention to you in the ocean because they can feel the vibrations of you swimming away. This is pretty common with sharks. They will eat each other. Despite popular belief, sharks are not all apex predators. A lot of them fill that middle part of the food pyramid, which makes them a mesopredator. So if you are a larger shark, it's quite common for you to eat smaller sharks. I'm gonna give this scene a four out of 10. So these are supposed to be mako sharks and they look slightly more close to a great white. Although makos in general often are considered to just be great white shark looking, but smaller. They did a pretty decent job on the teeth though. You can see them kind of jutting out of their jaw. They recognize that gun. It's impossible. Sharks do not swim backwards, they can't. In general, sharks cannot swim backwards. The main reason for this is that they don't actually have a locomotor motion that would move them backwards. So if we were walking backwards, we're just moving our feet and pushing in a backwards direction. They don't have something near or at the front of their body that would provide thrust to let them move backwards. I'm gonna give this a two out of 10 because I feel bad giving another film a one out of 10. <laughs> My favorite shark movie is Shark Night because I know how unrealistic it is. I just end up laughing the whole time and also Jaws because Jaws is just the OG shark movie. If you liked this video, feel free to click the link above.